A is for Alcoholic is a program about recovery. My name is John, and I'm an alcoholic. And my name is Jerry, and I'm an alcoholic. Join us as we go through the alphabet of alcoholism one letter at a time. Yay, alcoholism. Yay. So, you know, it's... Recovering from alcoholism, sorry. <laughs> you, right, this is not... Yay, recovery. Yo, no, Yay. This, is, this is not barstool sports. Barstool? So, barstool sports was originally, like... I don't know what it was originally. It just seems like this. It seems like a drunk world star. No. Like what my ex brother in law thought. Like the chive. It's like what my ex brother in law thought was the height of comedy. It's not really that funny. No, nah, I mean I get sometimes every once in a while, but you know. Right, every once in a while. You know, I was thinking about this. Uh, I was thinking about recovery and I was thinking about the um were you now were you <laughs> well I was thinking about the topic that you that you suggested for this week which is can't never did a thing right and the first thing that popped into my head was the uh, Aerosmith song from Armageddon love it oh can't god can't yeah. never did a thing <clears throat> and I feel like Armageddon um it came in a time where I was much more vulnerable to those kinds of things. Like I knew it was kind of a cheesy movie. Yeah. But I would get caught up in the Michael Bay epicness. How old bit. were you then? Like 30? I don't know. I was just fucking with you. I was I old you enough. 30. Was I? I don't know. When did that come out? 1998? I was in my 20s, 22 or 23. Yeah. But anyway, so. No, but uh, so that came up and I was like, can't. You know, but there's a lot of C words, right? I mean, coup, Capitol building, cancel culture, right? I mean, any number of things could could work, right? Um, but it it kind of felt like, you know, when you've ever been in a meeting and there's like the old guy who won't shut up about things outside of recovery, and everybody's like, we're all trying to have a discussion about something that's important to all of us, and we're all here for a purpose and a reason, and people will politely ask him to you know stay on topic or politely ask him to you know like let's let's keep it you know to, let's talk about alcoholism here let's talk about the important thing at hand and everybody here is trying to help everybody and you seem to be unhelpful until finally you just have to tell him like you can't come to this fucking meeting anymore maybe you Never can go to another happen. meeting it's so specific has that <laughs> happened to you not in not to that extent because usually people get it that like we're here, this forum is here to be used for, you know, a certain thing. There are rules. Even yeah. in Alcoholics Anonymous, there are rules in the meeting. And if you right. don't follow the rules, you know, I think another term is terms of service. Then you got to- I think AA out. is all rules. I don't right think for it's, ever... <laughs> it's all yeah. rules. It's all, I mean, the whole thing is about 12. Oh, no, there's steps, there's suggestions, suggestions and steps. I mean, but yeah, yeah. but you know, um, and and I think what I love too, you posted something in your Instagram stories about self will run riot. Yeah, and I don't, you know, again, we don't need to go any of the specifics or of anything, but I feel like. Cause we don't, we don't need to, everybody knows what the fuck happened. Cause something right? big happened. I don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but I just, I was like, it is, it is self will run riot. Mm -hmm. And like, and I want to get back, you know, to the original topic to our, to our, our letter today. But like when, when there is zero, self-reflection mm -hmm. then you can't even begin the work of working on yourself right? right of changing anything right you know i mean i don't know i don't necessarily have a question in there but it's like i think that's what self-will run riot is and that, i think that that was the conclusion that you and i came to was yeah this the choices i am making are not working anymore um and that i need to find some other way and you know, the whole higher power thing doesn't always work for everybody. And I think no. that that's why that's why there's a book of suggestions, right? That's why whatever those are, because we weren't we were not working on any suggestions. It was just like, whatever I feel is right. And I'm just going to fucking do it. And I have no right. plans. And that's self will. 
it's like whatever makes you feel good in the moment is what propels mm -hmm. you and fuels you to keep doing whatever you're doing that's self-will and when mm -hmm. it runs riot it's absolutely like whatever is making me feel good in this moment is pretty much in charge everybody mm -hmm. else can fuck off you know what and, i mean <laughs> yeah and i mean have you has it ever do you do you remember i mean has there ever been a time where drinking um fulfilled the promises that it made to you i mean oh maybe, not really i mean maybe by getting drunk yeah it promised it was going to get me drunk and then i got drunk but no no lifelong promises just little self-will run riot promises mm -hmm. you know what i mean yeah sorry about the dogs barking it's just that kind of day that's fine i'm not you know i mean these are it's um music to my ears those here. dogs are fucking self-will run riot right now that's all they care about is, <laughs> is barking yeah um but uh can't never did a thing do you want to mm -hmm. maybe expand a little bit on it's like my dad's famous quote it's like a wagner my grandfather used to say it. it's like whenever you would he'd be like you got to try and do this and i'd be like i can't do this and he'd be like can't never did a thing which basically the whole idea is that if you keep telling yourself you can't do it it's not going to do shit for you you know mm -hmm. the self-defeating attitude will not you know will not um pay off in the end you know he's like if you don't even try how do you know you can't do it that's what my dad always said how, how are you so convinced of you not being able to do something Hmm. without even trying it at all that's what it was you know and i just thought see that's pretty funny my little brother has it tattooed across his chest that's can't yeah. never did a thing it's a motivator right yeah i think yeah i mean i'm gonna make a, a pretty obvious or um predictable analogy and talk about running for a second but go ahead um... <laughs> you run <laughs> yeah i ran well, yesterday <clears throat> Are you back? At, how's your How's your neck? It's all right. I gotta go see the Cairo again on Tuesday with a mask on. It's rad getting your shit all cracked up with a mask on. Love it. That's sarcasm. <laughs> um. Well, I'm sure it'll be fine. I mean, yeah, whatever. You know, I had to go to the dentist the other day. That happened to me. I had somebody. Yeah, they, they just cut a in hole in the mask. <laughs> Open the mask. <laughs> just no, no. I took it off. They have this thing that comes down over your face or close mm -hmm. to your face, not over it, but close to it. And it just sucks air. So it's, Whoa, that's pretty cool. What'd you go to the dentist for? I'm just getting cleaning. I just get oh, some, yeah. Nothing, um, no emergency, nothing. No, 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 no emergency. And um, they did a um, fluoride treatment in the back teeth just cause there's some, some decay and they're trying to stop that decay. And rather than have to drill into three of my teeth, which God knows how much that costs. And I really don't want, I mean, I feel like dental tooth pain is its own personal special place in hell. Like, yeah, it is, dude. It's, it's, um, it's never been, I've never, never been a fan. I mean, I remember when I chipped my tooth on a slivered almond and a salad I was eating one time and it scared mm -hmm. the shit out of me. Cause it was a lot of the tooth. Yeah. And like, but the tooth didn't hurt, but it was all gone. Like I, I was like, oh my God, that's a lot of tooth. And so that was the first time I had to get like. That's your other podcast. Oh my God, that's a lot of tooth with John Staley. <laughs> um, and I, 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 I just remember thinking like that was before I quit drinking too. And I didn't really, it didn't occur to me that my dental health would be in, in any way related to my drinking. Yeah. But um. I just remember going to the dentist the next morning because I was so terrified because I knew how bad tooth pain can be. Mm -hmm. And it was that, and I didn't matter. I didn't care how much it cost or how I was going to pay for it. I was just going to go do it. And that was just my life, you know, would be the the dental bill or whatever. But, um, but it was in those moments of personal pain that I was like, oh shit, I got to do something. And, mm -hmm. and like, to find out that all of the drinking, and it's not just the drinking, right? It's the excessive eating and the sugar and the soda well not brushing your teeth before you go to bed so you fucking drink a shitload of hard liquor and then eat mm -hmm. a bag of chips and then a couple of marshmallow peeps and then just fall asleep 
<laughs> sounds like you know what i'm saying that. like yeah that. so it's just fucking your shit all up you know mm -hmm. yeah but i think the, going back i got i got sidetracked there but the analogy we're talking about running yeah well when you talk about can't never did a thing i didn't know what i was doing when i started and i've come to this realization recently so i've been doing this on and off for almost two years now a year yeah and a half maybe what's that running running yeah. and i didn't know what i was doing so i would just go out there and then maybe i'd learn a little something else and i'd be like oh, okay so this is so my i'm moving my legs incorrectly so i should move them like this i'm not doing this right so change this up and it's progressed and progressed and progressed and i've learned some things but i think there's a bit of detriment to listening to too many people because i feel like i am sometimes when i'm out there now and i'm trying to like focus on all the different things and is my back straight and is am i leaning mm -hmm. forward and am I, am I pulling my legs up instead of kicking them and all this stuff i have kind of lost like that it was just fun to go out there and do it and instead right. i'm constantly trying to and i feel like I am more, the more I learn, the more I realize my limitations. And so when I get out there and I start doing things, I'm like, I'm, this, I'm not doing it right. And I'm not doing it this way. And I'm not doing it this way. And, ah, this is not fun. I should just quit. Whereas before I was just kind of, I didn't know what the can't was. Yeah. I didn't know that I couldn't do this and couldn't do that. And so maybe, and I'm not saying that not, I'm not saying that want somebody shouldn't seek help if they're dealing with alcoholism, because I think it's an important step. Yeah. I think that's a really, that's yeah. But that's like the most important, I think. I think if you spend too much time overthinking how you're doing it right and that your sobriety or recovery isn't perfect or up to some outside standard, mm -hmm. that it's not going to hold. It's not going to, solidify it's not going to be something that will be consistent and regular oh it's a really good point you'll fuck it up because you're not living in the moment right mm -hmm. so like your whole point is that like when you were running you weren't concentrating on doing this shit you're supposed to that you think you're supposed to be doing the run was better because you were in the moment of running like mm -hmm. you're experiencing your body doing what it's supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. You're experiencing everything around you, the movement of your body, the rhythm of your steps and everything. You were thinking my back's not straight. My feet aren't where you were just in it. And that's the same thing. I think with recovery is that when I personally, and from my experience, when I get bogged down into program shit and I'm like, Oh, I'm not doing the program right. Or, Oh, I'm not working my steps right. Or, Oh, I only got to my fifth step and didn't even finish that. What kind of fucking recovery do to my, like, I'm not living my life. I'm just sitting here trying to figure out the steps. And I think the whole idea of best steps or in working steps in recovery is to live in the steps instead of just, do you know what I'm saying? Instead of just mm -hmm. sitting there worrying about fucking old Jimmy two-tone over there who's been at fucking seven meetings this week you know telling you that if you don't work the steps right you're gonna fucking die you know mm -hmm. even though you've been coming to these stupid rooms now for fucking six years you know <laughs> i don't know do you know what i mean like but that but that that's the trap of the rooms and that's the trap of the human mind too though is that you spend so much time worrying about the technique instead of just enjoying it for what it is you know and yeah and and trying to and there's a whole nother, you know, there's, there's layers of this stuff because we are dealing with externalities right now. Right. Yeah. That we I'm, can't control. Everything's <laughs> fucked up right now. If you're in early recovery right now, you get so many fucking pro If you're just in recovery in general, you get props for not relapsing because this whole mm -hmm. thing is a fucking shit show if you're paying attention. And even if you're not paying attention, you're just living life like the isolation, if you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, the isolation alone is a motherfucker, right. dude. You know, I got right. really lucky that I got to move into a house with eight other people. You know, there's nine human beings in this house. And uh, under any other circumstance, it would be like kind of rough, stressful. And four dogs. Oh. But, under but this you don't. You don't feel that way. Not at all, because I'm not alone. <laughs> when I was making an olive, it was great. But we were, we were with each other. But there was also just us three in our little island and we were alone 
You know what I mean? And now I'm here with my parents and my parents, my family, they've all, everybody in this house has had COVID except for my family, except for me and Megan and Olive, us three, mm -hmm. we're, we're still COVID negative. They've all had it. They've all um, recovered. They, so they call themselves day walkers. My mom's like, I'm a day walker <laughs> so I can go to fries. She's like, you want me to go to fries and get you some frozen fruit? I'm a day walker. And so even my sister was like, you know, you have to understand that your dad, my dad and her husband, they're essential workers. So they're out in the public and then and it was like they could potentially bring it back in. And I'm like, I don't think it works that way because they've already had it. Right. So mm -hmm. we can get into the the minutia of the disease or whatever. But basically, the point is, I live with a bunch of day walkers who I get to experience the outside world through. Do you know what I mean? So they'll go out and do stuff. They're not out partying or going to restaurants, but they'll run errands, go to the grocery right, store. Right. Yeah. You should take me to the fucking chiropractor. And then I was like, I had reservations because I'm like, mom, I don't want to get COVID from the chiropractor. My mom's like, no, she's a day walker. She already had it too. Like the whole staff had it. Like everybody here has had it, right? Like I'm the outsider right now because I haven't had it. And thank God I haven't. I don't want to get it. It's awful. But um, my point is I'm not alone. And being isolated is prayer time. Like for you, I think about you a lot. And I get annoyed, man. Like half the time I don't want to do this fucking podcast. I want to go do life shit. My sister's driving down from Phoenix. I'm stressing because she's going to pull up any minute. And I'm like, I've already put this podcast off a few times and had to move it around like let me just do this podcast and then i'll go and sit in the back of my sister but when i start talking to you i feel grateful and i also think about you because i know you're all alone like who's your 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 bubbles like walter is that even i don't even I know see him once brother. every couple of weeks yeah. so like there's a, there's definitely a quarantine period in between right because and walter I... is tom cruise dude he's risky fucking business come on i love walter <laughs> but you know what walter does dude you know risky business so risky business dude um, yeah. yeah you know and i have i have i i see nabil and he's pretty much isolated and you know mm -hmm. like anyway and then you know i occasionally see rashida so i see these three people right very small bubble though so very small mm -hmm. and then you and talk right. to me via zoom and i'm like i don't even want to fucking die. i'm gonna quit the podcast fuck this i got shit to do i'm trying to build my dream house what the fuck you know or i have to finish this commission painting and keep painting mm -hmm. so everybody doesn't think i'm lazy because i can't tattoo and i'm in a house full of people who all have jobs except for my mom and me and my mom's job is running the house you know what i mean my wife mm -hmm. is working on her real estate my daughter's in zoom school and i'm just fucking around being like i can't tattoo because i'm afraid to get covid and then like, I'm all scared about that. And I'm like worried that I look lazy. And I'm like, I'm not lazy. A, I don't like tattooing anymore, but I'll still do it to pay bills. Do you know what I mean? It's not the worst job in the world. I've had no. way worse jobs. That being said, so I, in my mind internally, I have to keep myself busy all the time. So I have to be out in the garage. So I'm out in the garage like six hours a day, just painting, just trying to do commissions, you know? Um, I guess my point is kind of, I don't know. I kind of went off on a tangent there, but- well <laughs> well, yeah. I run and I paint, dude. I run and I paint <laughs> and I try to lift weights. I don't and these think runs down lazy. here are wild. I don't think and I'm lazy either. I just the the fucked up part of my brain is like mm -hmm. get cracking, Wagner. Well, we were talking about isolation and recovery and no that job <laughs> <laughs> that you don't you don't feel you don't feel the isolation. No, um not really. I guess I feel it sometimes because now, mm -hmm. especially that there's no work at all, like before. Right would be like i would be able to like work once a week and there was mm -hmm. some sort of external schedule like there'll be days where i'm just like it's just weird man yeah and i'll get it's up like early and i'll read and i'll write in my book and i'll go for a run or you know plan to like drive out to the beach and go film some sandpipers and seagulls and then i'll drive back and like that's my day and i get the same thing in my head where gosh, I should have done something. Should I have been productive? What did I create? What right. did I do? What did I produce? Did I, and I'm like, honestly, I mean, and this is not the podcast for that, but I think that's some fucking bullshit consumerism, capitalistic mindset that serves no purpose other than to stress me out when I'm really just trying to enjoy my life. Right. Right. <laughs> no, I think it fits in the podcast though, because mm -hmm. the old way we used to try to enjoy our lives was by fucking and anesthetizing consuming. ourselves and naked yeah. yeah consuming shit to knock ourselves out yeah the same could be said for having a job that you hate doing mm -hmm. you know you're just knocking yourself out no that being said i don't think everybody out there can go and live their dreams because dreams are weird and the world is cruel it's not like you can go out and be like i'm gonna be a fucking interpretive dancer and you got four left feet it's just not gonna happen you know 
maybe you can dance alone in your room. I don't know. You got to find the time to do the things you love, I guess. I don't know. Dreams are weird with... and the world is cruel. The new chapter. It's true. It is. Wagner. I know, right? It's That should just be what our podcast should be called. Because <laughs> at this point, I don't know if I have recovery licked, but I'm like, okay, what else can I say to these people out here who are getting sober? I'm like, you just got to, f- it's not even about being happy. I've said that a billion times. It's about being content and being feeling like, okay, in your own skin. And I still don't feel okay in my own skin most of the time. But when I do, I'm like, oh, maybe this is it. Like, maybe this is recovery is that I feel okay in my own skin. Like, I don't feel like I'm wearing a pair of pants or the crotch is a little too high, which is usually how I feel. Isn't that, wasn't that Lyndon Lyndon Johnson? Isn't there like, that's one of my favorite leaks. Jumbo. um, My leaked uh, uh, political um, phone calls is Lyndon Johnson. Talking about his pants. Taylor. Mm-hmm. talking about how his balls get all snagged in the He's uh... like make room for my balls yeah Linda Johnson's calls dick jumbo and would just like take it out yeah yeah he would just take it out they'd be at a meeting he'd he had this giant dick and he'd be like bam i'm lyndon johnson hell yeah i had my predecessor killed look at my giant dick <laughs> That's what I think. I think he had JFK killed. That's a that's my conspiracy. Remember conspiracies used to be funny like that? You're like, oh, yeah. CIA killed JFK. Now it's nah, anyway. Anyway. Um, Anywho, that, you that's know, we had there's already enough podcasts for that shit. I just listen one today in the garage. So I'm good. So 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 let's let's talk about that in a different way. Because what I see here, what I mm-hmm. see is a lot of um regardless of how you feel about what's happening in the world and where you lie and who you are upset and angry at. Um, right. So, and, and whether or not your anger is justified, Mm -hmm. these still, these feelings, these emotions and these thoughts collectively still reside factually as resentments. Yeah. Yo, that's a good tie-in, right? At no, all. And when Whatever. we're done with this, I'm going to go out and tell my dad, yo, John just fucking <laughs> tied in the storming of the Capitol and these conspiracy theorists and Trump supporters to resentments. My so, mom, not to interrupt, but my no, mom no, no, the other ahead. day, we we're having this conversation and I was talking to Olive and I was like, you know, Olive, here's the shitty thing about high school is they don't give you a class to teach how to pay your taxes. They don't give you a class to teach how to manage your money. They don't give you a tax, like all these classes to do real life shit. Right. And my mom like was listening. She goes, you know what? They should give a class to all these kids on 12 steps. They should teach them about the 12 steps, but just leave out the God stuff, but just teach them how to like walk all that shit back. So they learn the emotional shit about themselves. And, my tie-in is that if these people who fucking were wiling out in the Capitol had been working the 12-step, they'd realize that they were being fucking bamboozled. <laughs> well, they'd have to say it like call their sponsor before yeah, they and work got on the resist- bus and like do a four-step. Like, <laughs> could you imagine? Like, like doing a four-step on a Q drop. Like, what the <laughs> fuck, dog? I like, mean. T- t- these- doing a four step on fucking my on, on Trump. Like I remember when I was doing my four step, and my sponsor was like, "You you could do it on Trump," and I'm like, "There's, I already severely fucked that guy. No, we're not doing. Maybe I should have done a four step on Trump. It's not too late. I mean, I I just no, I- it's too late, John. That ship has sailed. <laughs> I well, so that's but that's I, the I thing should. that these mm-hmm. resentments, regardless, my resentments, because I mean, mm-hmm. I, I like to play it off cool on the mic, like I got it all figured out. But I'm yeah, just, got it figured out. You wild. I man. was fucking terrified on Wednesday. I yeah. was angry on Thursday. Mm-hmm. I had a certain level of fucking Schoiden Froden mm-hmm. on Thursday or whatever the mm-hmm. fuck it was. Yeah. I'm. I, I do my best. I love, I, my ultimate goal is to be able to look at the world with curiosity mm-hmm. and without judgment. Mm-hmm. And that's not the case because a lot of this shit is fucking hilarious, makes me laugh, makes me angry, makes me mm-hmm. really, really, really deeply sad mm-hmm. because, yeah. Yeah. because I see this stuff that's going on, but it's it's these resentments. So if I'm angry, that's my resentment toward Trump toward Q toward any of this stuff. I still need to deal with that because I can't change that person. I can't change Q. No, it's going to be Q. 
Right. It's going to be so, some asshole who runs 8chan and his little fucking whack off buddy. This is what bums me out about all of it. And this will go right back into recovery, I think, is that it's it's such a waste of potential. Mm-hmm. The potential we have as human beings, the potential we have as individuals to make life better for everybody around us and actually not not live in self-will but live in selflessness and like look around and see how you can help people around you. We have so much potential to do that shit and we don't, none of us do. I don't, I'm part of it. Except big difference to me is I'm not pooping in the halls of the Capitol yelling about Donald Trump. You know, I'm over here in my garage painting, being pissed off about serenity prayer shit about shit. I cannot change here in my garage. Mm-hmm. I, I can vote in my local elections, you know, but all that big shit that all those ding dongs did that's them man i can't change them and just their potential is so wasted it's just such wasted potential dude like we could do we we could have had some rad shit by now if people had just gotten their shit together you know instead of being mad about guns and gay people and whatever other thing you know made up benghazi shit and man we could have figured that shit out we'd be so gangster right now everybody would just be happy not even happy Mm -hmm. but just be content eating quinoa yeah. free quinoa blow jobs good, on saturdays man. you know quinoa is good yeah quinoa I, is I pretty mean, good little mrs bragg's in it <laughs> Woo, dude some so, hot sauce dude, so i agree with you man coming. like the potential is there and i think right that, again it is it is a come it is incumbent upon me to look at my potential it isn't it right. was incumbent upon me at the time to see that there was a problem and to take steps to fix it mm-hmm. right and mm-hmm. and part of those steps that i have found is this notion of service and that we have to whether it's it doesn't have yeah. to be and this is something that really relieved me of a lot of pressure was that it was like service doesn't have to be directly it's not it's not you're in you're you're an, you're a soldier in AA and you know now that you've been sponsored you need to go get fancy and like <laughs> right right we're just getting Bill happened. W drops right like Bill <laughs> Bill W drop the, the Bill W drop you know yeah um so so but what has happened is that has happened in some organic ways with me that I appreciate just from. Mm-hmm existing but i have found other ways to be of service to people and whether or not you doing what you're doing you're out there painting to make money so you are working right. now right. just because you get paid differently than you used to doesn't mean it's not work i understand that yeah and you know. i appreciate the reassurance that's just more of a mental hang up on my own part because my whole life it's bad it has been clear to me in these past few weeks of how much i really fucked things up with my alcoholism it really has. And how much I need to forgive myself about those things because I did. I fucked a lot of things up here and I need to like, I needed to get in there and realize that. And then at that same point, be like, okay, so are you going to fuck it up again? Don't fuck it up again. How about that? That's the best way you can prove to everybody around you that you're not a fuck up is by not fucking it up, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. And I forgot all about that. I forgot all, I didn't forget about it. I just kind of, it's, it makes me feel bad. So I sweep it under the rug, you know, like I had this previous opportunity before with a house here and I drank it. I drank that house, man. And I bounced and went up oh, Tucson's not for me. I'm too sad. I'm going back to where my favorite bars are. And I went back to Eugene. And so now that yeah. we're working on this other house, they're like, well, you know, what reassurance do I have that you're not going to fucking bounce again and just go back to Eugene or real. And you know, my brother-in-law straight up is like, what re what reassurance do I have that you're not just going to flat out relapse and fucking take off? You know, like what reassurance do I have of that? And I'm like, you have none. I'm not going to, I can't bullshit you. I can't sit here and be like, that'll never happen. Cause I don't know what's going to happen. You know what I'm saying? But it's no. also, I'm like, but also keep in mind, I'm not on the edge of relapse every time you talk to me. I'm, I'm no. rarely, I haven't been since I've gotten sober on the edge of relapse. No, it's just, but any reassurance I make also, I realize now, is bullshit like i can't bullshit anybody here and be like everything's gonna be great i'm gonna be great i'm just like one day at a time dog that's how we're gonna roll with this but that is the reassurance jerry Mm -hmm. is that you are you just said it you're like i can't bullshit anybody so i'm gonna be honest with you so in the like if if relapse is down here Mm -hmm. your first step down you're probably gonna be like hey man i'm not feeling great Right. Oh, okay, cool. Well, right. you know, thanks for, thanks for sharing what else, you know, and you, 
all that stuff. So, I mean, I think that's part of the, the, the assurance because it's not the relapse. I don't think for you is going to happen in an instant. No, it's not like tomorrow I'm going to wake up and be like, all this weird craft beer my brother-in-law has sure looks delicious because it still right. looks like farts to me. <laughs> it but, does, dude. There's so I, much booze in this house. It's hilarious. I think about it the same way. I've got tons of booze. There's champagne. There's gin. There's mm-hmm. like some weird ass. There's some There's some mezcal called chemo sabi. <laughs> like, is it spelled like chemotherapy? I don't know. No, wow. but it's just, um, but uh, I'm funny, just man. like, but I think that like, I don't think that it's going to happen that way for me. I'm not saying that I'm, I am immune to it. No, but, neither of us are bulletproof, and we, we're both really aware of that. And but I think about bulletproof it. in recovery, dude. Like, yeah. hey, you know, I would. It would probably happen a little bit here and a little bit there and a little bit here, and then it might be have that one beer. And but even if I had that one beer, I would be like, I gotta fucking, I gotta get back on track because I know the better track, and so. I think the fact that you are open and honest with your family and that you are, you know, open and honest with yourself about how you feel more than you've ever been before, more than you were when you bounced the last time. Mm -hmm. Like that's the assurance that like, yeah, you know what? I feel shitty. Um, but I don't want to feel shitty or do you, does that make sense? I don't know. It absolutely makes sense. There's a lot more checks and balances here too. Right. You know, I spent most of my life like fucking my family over, to be honest with you. I really did. And this isn't like peel back the onion layers, Jerry Wagner, but like I did, man. And being here reminds me of like how bad, not how bad, but just how much I kind of fucked with my family growing up and fucked them over because of alcoholism, unchecked anger, unchecked mental illness, all that shit, you know? And as I get older and more sober i realize that shit but i can't be mad at myself and i catch myself getting i get real pissed at myself i'm like man you really you're gonna be 46 this year you really squandered a lot of your shit you know and then i have to really check that voice and be like no man like you're actually doing better than you've ever done in your 40s so good for you dude don't worry about it you know Mm -hmm. um but you know that being said there's still potential here i haven't fucked up so bad that i'm you know what I mean? That I'm, I'm deplorable and can no longer be touched or worked with. Nothing, nothing, no one is unsalvageable, you know, yeah. unless you're Donald Trump, fuck you. But no, I'm just kidding. I can't do it. You can edit that out. <laughs> but no, I don't think most people are unsalvageable. Even the people listening to this, that you all have potential. Mm-hmm. If you listen to this and still drinking and wanting to quit drinking, you have the potential to do that. And then from there, it just branches out and you have more potentials once you start to sober up and work a program of recovery. Even if it's your own personal, you don't got to do AA, you don't got to do NA, you don't got to do any of that shit if you don't want to. You just got to be honest with yourself and check yourself and realize it's not all about you. Isn't that the whole program is like, be honest with yourself, check yourself, be selfless, you know, help out other people, be kind and realize that it's not about you. The world is bigger than you and you mm-hmm. live in the world currently currently you know? yeah i mean so the, there's potential everywhere man it's all out there and i didn't realize that till i got sober you know yeah and i think that too you're i mean you're not deplorable obviously your family has invited you to live with them again yeah i'm living in this tiny child's room with all these weird stickers on the wall like you if know what you I mean? were if you were this that would not have been an option had you been yeah drunk jerry would have been here two weeks and been out he would have been like, we're getting a fucking apartment in South Tucson in a flea bag because I got to hit bars, you know, and mm-hmm. my parents would have been like, good luck, you know, just looking at me and my family being like his poor family, you know, and now at this point, they're like, no, we have this property, build a house, let's do this, yeah. you know, so now we're doing that, you know, so yeah, so, you know, I don't know, man, this has been good for me so far, the mm-hmm. runs have been good too, and here I am telling you how great it is, and you're like, yeah, I, I saw Walter, <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about I saw your, Walter Mintz, you know. Tell me about I love your, Walter. Tell me, I, tell me about your runs. I want to hear about your runs. Dude, these runs are weird, right? Because I know I don't know how you do it in Sonoma, but in Oregon, I ran loops. I always ran a big yeah. loop. I love loops. I don't like running straight lines. I don't like right. running and then turning around and running back. I it's hate not it. my favorite. And that's yeah. the only way I can run right now because of how far north we are in the desert. It's not really very incorporated. Like I'm literally running past ranches and shit. Like I'm running in the desert, you know which mm-hmm. is beautiful, but it's a lot of straight lines. And so the other day, I, I keep trying to find connecting streets that'll connect to the two main roads that run. And the great part is the two main roads that run parallel to each other on both sides of us, you know, the north, south, and the east, west, they're all a mile apart. So 
if, if I start off on like this road here and run down to the next intersection, that's almost exactly a mile. So you can run the whole block and it's four miles, it's a four mile run. I have one of those. Yeah, it's rad. So I've been mm -hmm. trying to find connecting streets though that will shorten it. So I'm not so much on the shoulder because Tucson people drive like wild animals. Then I don't want to die that, that I don't want to get hit by a car. So you try are you, are you running toward traffic? Cause you should yes. be running opposite of it. Okay. All right. Yeah. I run towards traffic. Yeah. So I can see the motherfucker coming. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Go ahead. But, um, but the shoulders get small regardless. Yes. And people, even when they see me, it'll be like looking at fucking Ooh. Instagram. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Dude, you get a titty text on your phone. You want to see the titty. You know what I'm saying? Like I get it or, or a dick pic or whatever your jam is, but mm -hmm. this is a long story. I was taking this run down sun kissed road, which it, it connects to this other road. And uh, it, part of it's unincorporated. It's all horse land. It's all ranch land and shit. And this giant fucking coyote comes running across the wash. And he's big, like German Shepherd big. And he was about like maybe 50 yards away. And so I had to stop and let him like run. And it kind of freaked me out because in my mind, being from you living in Eugene, Oregon, there's not, I got to worry about the errant dog. Mm -hmm. But this one, I'm like, yo, is this animal going to stalk me? And then my brain had to be like, no, he looks very well fed. He's as big as a German shepherd and look fat. Like he's like, he wants nothing to do with you. You're too bony to eat anyway. Mm -hmm. But I still like thought about it. And you can see it on my Fitbit where the run where I stopped and my pace stopped to a walk because I was like, as soon as I got about a hundred yards from, um, from where I thought he was, I took off running and turned around and there he was in the middle of the road, like watching me, you know? But it's just very bizarre to be running out here, John. Like I just bet. wildlife. Dude, it's just yeah, I, I'm excited for when you come down because it's pretty crazy, man. There's some yeah. Quail, family of quail, rabbits. Yeah, it's coyotes crazy. are not gonna they will they don't attack humans like like it's in the single digit percentages. Right. And it's of only, course, yeah. It's only like to defend themselves or if they're absolutely fucking like desperate, desperate. I think desperate, I was doesn't. less scared of it being a coyote and more scared of it being a rancher's dog that got out right right because right. if it was a german shepherd that got out well that's my ass because he's like mm -hmm. yo get off my dirt road what do you do around my dirt road mm -hmm. you know but it, it the runs have been good they've been a lot of straight lines i'm mm -hmm. right next to a big circuit that's like a 10 mile circuit it's a big trail that goes in a big loop but i still have to run a mile down to get to it and i you know it's not a small loop it's a big loop but it's a beautiful i mean you go you know you're in the desert and it's like a bike path running path um i got really lucky out here man really yeah. good yeah, yeah. It, it really yeah it really is it's really nice and as soon as covid calms down maybe i can start actually hiking where other people hike because i'd like to start hiking again too but see and this is where recovery gets me right like i won't be outside walking around <laughs> this was not this would not be old jerry <laughs> old jerry was like 220 pounds and smoking a pack of cigarettes and getting like fucking super winded from going you know uphill and i know it's going to get hot here too it's going to get hot for all of us again but it's going to get hot and well, i think like, well, i ain't running buddy i go out to the parks and there's people out there but everybody mm -hmm. kind of fucking masks up as we yeah yeah the next by no one does here dude they don't give oh. a fuck dude arizona's weird man but um but yeah, I mean, that's all I do. And there's usually like, I'm on, I'm not, I'm rarely am I on some narrow path where I actually have to be anywhere near anybody. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I don't know what the situation is or how comfortable you feel, but I mean, it's totally different, but I mean, I think that hiking in like parks and stuff is probably mm -hmm. going to be the, the least, um, unsafe thing. It's going to be the safest thing. Oh, it should be absolutely safe. I know that I I'm just, um, I just don't want to be around motherfuckers right now. I really don't. I really don't. Yeah. I hear that. I hear that. Um, but I just see, you know, you talk about potential and you talk about, you know, your brother-in-law saying, what's the guarantee? And you're like, I don't, I mean, there's no guarantee except I want to be here. That yeah. I'm, I'm happy here and that I want mm -hmm. to make, I want to have a life here. And, and I just ran five miles this fucking morning and I don't, I haven't, that's you know the person who was here before the person who i remember being on the phone with trying to fix a fucking ceiling fan with a yeah. bottle of whiskey and a screwdriver holy like, shit dude. i have this like i have this weird memory of you in that house and like having a phone call you know, i gotta fix this fucking ceiling fan and just being and i just pictured you in this fucking i don't know why but i just imagined the house being completely bare and no. just like a bottle <laughs> of whiskey much, on dude. the counter yeah mm-hmm 
with the ladder. Hey, the the box and... said it was a three hour job and it was a six hour job. <laughs> I even had one of my friends call me and she's like, yo, I'll come get you. We're having a pool party with a bunch of girls and stuff. And I'm like a married man, but I'm like, yeah, I'll go hang out with a bunch of girls, drink whiskey. I'll be done putting this fan in an hour and a half. Cut mm-hmm. to like six hours later and I'm fucking shit faced. And I'm like, the fan is barely hanging on by like a hope. Yeah, yeah, that was awful. So I think that that juxtaposition and maybe your brother-in-law, and that's the thing is like the people around us who maybe we haven't seen in a while who, or mm-hmm. maybe who only sees us, seen us peripherally or mm-hmm. via social media. In his mind, you're still the fucking drunk guy. Yeah, I got sober uh, at his house, dude. I used to know. drink at his bar. Right. He was one so, of my bartenders. Yeah. So he, you know, maybe it's still, maybe he's still unconvinced and not that you have to, and not that your sobriety or your happiness is based on convincing him, but he's mm-hmm. just being straight up. Right. No, it's just, just being, being cautious. Honest. Yeah. There's money yeah. involved in this shit and it's, yeah. it's yeah. I, I, yeah. Mm-hmm. So um, the only thing you can say is I'm here and I'm doing it. And that's, I mean, you know, and not that's it, my mm-hmm. assurance either, but like, but yeah, I mean, that's just, that's how I, I would see it. And you're right. Like when there's money involved, people, it changes people's perspectives and it should. Mm-hmm. It should absolutely. Money's creepy, dude. It should, Money's creepy. you know, especially when it's my money and, and, you know, we're doing a thing. And so with somebody else. So I think, um, I just think it's fucking awesome. And like I said, I want to plan a trip out for Christmas. Like I was. I was thinking, you know, nice, cool Christmas in Arizona. It'd be like 60 degrees. Great. Perfect time of year to run. This whole time has been, because in about two months, it's going to get fucking gross. I mean, we can have mm-hmm. Coda on and Coda will be like, this place fucking sucks. <laughs> but also Coda lives in Phoenix and Phoenix is hard to live. Well, he lives near Phoenix. Mm-hmm. Phoenix is w- way hotter. But mm-hmm. yeah, right now is the perfect time of year. So I'm thinking do that, like even fucking camp out, you know. We should have a house built by then too, but you can camp in the yard. I don't know. I just imagine like doing some fucking like weird Jim Morrison stretches or so, like sort of a healthy Jim Morrison vibe. Like I don't really want Jim Morrison. You've been living in California too long, dude. (laughs) What's John like? Oh, he's like a healthy Jim Morrison. (laughs) Um, but I definitely want to check out the desert, and I'm I'm looking forward to it. uh, Yeah, in, in a way that because the last time I was there for your wedding was like. You're shit faced. I was, yeah. You're shit show. You're shit faced. Show, show. Shit faced. Mm-hmm. Oh my god. You're a- Abercrombie and bitch. That was yeah. you. Jesus. What's up? I'm Abercrombie and bitch. I feel like I need to um to make some amends to your sister in law to make. Oh no, she thought that well. was funny as hell, dude. But I was just talking about that the other night. Mm. So I guess the point of all this is is what is can't never did a thing. So don't storm the capital y'all mm-hmm. basically don't, don't i mean drink. i mean that's that's the, if that's the metaphor if the um you know if you don't you don't if i am my own capital and i don't i don't pour whiskey on it i don't fucking drink that i don't know i that that's that metaphor nah, i you just fell fucking apart right away really um, stretch in there <laughs> no but but i really do think that this is we see we see resentments in everyday life we live them we have them it doesn't have to be alcohol related yes no one's and, free of them i don't care how far down the program you are you will never be free of them you mm-hmm. know what i mean you just have to learn how to cope with them right in a positive way but i don't think you'll ever be free of them and you know i don't think that the world is going to listen to your mother even though i agree with her that you know if the 12 steps were taught in a way yes. mm-hmm. in schools for kids you know i mean i don't know I don't know what plans you have for your child and being like Olive, step one, you know, like are you powerless kind of over Pokemon? <laughs> powerless over anime? I it's don't know. Animal Crossing now. Are you powerless over Animal Crossing? Oh, uh, I haven't played. I don't have a Switch, but um, she's I, getting one. I want to get one for her I birthday. Think. Oh, nice. She loves it. My sister has Animal Crossing, and my sister just straight Jack just took the Switch. I'm like Olive. You gotta let your the uh, your aunt play with the switch, and all. I was like, I know, man. I just gotta get four more clamshells. <laughs> See, or whatever it is, it is. Yeah. they're hooked. Yeah, yeah. Well, there's a little raccoon fishing in the lake or whatever is going on mm-hmm. there. Gotta yeah. get a gotta get four more fossils or whatever to trade mm-hmm. them in for iron. Right. 
Um, I get it. I get it though. I'm like, I get I it. You gotta get that forge up, dude. You gotta get the fucking pike. Get that iron pike. You're the leader. It's like a kid's arc or whatever. Is that the game? It's nothing related? like it, but that's what I'm trying to relate to. Yeah. Right. I'm like, listen, right. you get a forge up, you can start making ammunition. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And we have a fuck arc. Even when we're playing seven days to die, you get enough ammo, dude. You run them zombies, dude. But I mean, it takes it takes time and it takes work and it takes effort, all of these things, right? And so mm-hmm. So what is my problem today? What is my little resentment today that I need to deal with? And um, yeah, I think everybody, somebody was, I was having a conversation with someone and they were saying, they were talking about how they were so angry all the time and that sometimes the rage would just come to them. And I'm like, yeah, I was like, dude, you have fucking resentments. I was like, every single time you bring up one of your old bosses, you just immediately get angry. And I'm like, well, one, you were a bartender, you know, for decades. And our whole job was to suppress our rage for the stupidity oftentimes of our guests. No offense yes. to guests, doesn't matter. We're probably not going to have restaurants ever again, but whatever. Right. And I doubt a lot of bar guests are listening to a recovery podcast. <laughs> right. Exactly. Maybe there are quite a Maybe. few actually. Uh, you, right. Y'all need you to know. quit drinking. <laughs> Can't moderate. Knock that shit off. You're not right? moderating. There's no, no. Um, and, uh, and so I think that, that all that suppressed rage had nowhere to go and you don't deal with it. And I was telling him, I was like, look, dude, these are resentments that you're holding inside and you have to let them go. And he's like, I understand the philosophy. And it occurred to me. And I was like, yeah, you know what? And I kind of, I was like, well, here's the application. I was like, it's called step four and five. <laughs> you know, <laughs> great. That person must have really loved that. They must well, have been like, they were receptive to the idea, and so I didn't give them the big book, um, right? Obviously, because that's like I'm not gonna. Well, I'm gonna need you to sit down. And we're gonna read 164 pages. So I'm gonna need you to get down on your knees with me. Oh, good and, lord! <laughs> you know, like <laughs> all that shit. I've done that shit too, uh, and I'm like, so have I. So have I. Not to get um, on my knees part, man. Can I just sit here and pray? Come on, man. Come on. My my sponsor was like, are you allergic to kneeling? And I was like, ah, oh, fuck no. All right. Let's do this. But, Let's do it. But I just said, yeah. you need to write it down. And then it was like, oh, okay. And that sounded all right. And I was like, then you need to share it with somebody you trust. He was like, Pfft. and I was like, I know. But if you don't give utterance to it, if you don't share it with somebody, then it still lives inside of you. And if it still lives inside of you, it's not going to stop making you angry. So if, yeah. you're, if you're angry because of some boss from 2004, still, yeah. still. Dude, that was a long time ago. <laughs> that was a long ass time yeah. ago. Yeah. So I just said here and I gave them the, um, I gave them the, the, tell 12 steps and traditions Mm -hmm. is that what it's called yeah the 12 and 12 yeah 12 and 12 i can't yeah did they run away from me i would have been like why are you giving me all this especially if it's an old bartender friend who's probably not sober (laughs) it's like why are you giving me all this shit well so they are sober they but not through any program just right just your will i just said i said said, you don't need to read this whole thing but check out four and five and i'm telling you that that is the application of this philosophy that you say Mm -hmm. that you understand. Yeah. So if you want to get rid of the anger and the rage that shows up unannounced, it doesn't, we know Mm -hmm. it doesn't show up unannounced. We know as alcoholics, we know exactly that it's a fucking resentment that we, we cling to out of some egoic um, desire to, Mm -hmm. to, to to be angry, to fucking, feel superior feel superior feel above it thank you that's what it is so if i have someone to be angry because usually you're angry because you feel like you're in the right because you're better than so there or you feel like you've been wronged and you deserve better than being wrong the way you were wrong. so it's 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 entitlement Mm -hmm. it's fucking what did you just say it's entitlement it's superiority superiority Mm -hmm. um it's egotistical and that's what all the resentments are and i said look Mm -hmm. that's so this is the application. So from now on, I don't want to fucking hear about it. Basically, I was just like, here's the homework that you need to do. I said, I'm happy to listen. Mm-hmm. I'm not here to preach and I'm not your therapist, but 
I'll, you know, basically I was like, I'll listen to your fifth step, right. you know, but you're whatever. like, here's another, I got another great resource for you. It's called A's for Alcoholic Podcast. Uh, <laughs> give it a listen. And if you could rate and review it, that'd rate be super helpful. If you could rate and review my podcast, but it'll um, help you out a lot with your resentments. <laughs> Let's rate and review it. Rate and review it. Smash that like button. <laughs> Subscribe. Subscribe, dude. Subscribe. You know, and we also have a Patreon page at patreon.com slash hey, AIFA. Listen, five buddy. bucks goes a long way. Five bucks <laughs> goes a long way. <laughs> like I'm eating the mangoes. I'm eating the fucking fruit out of the tree in my front yard. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm living off of right now. So, so if you could, the that mango, was- it's like a mango growth. They give a mango tree. <laughs> In your oh, yard you know what oh, i mean though yes i feel like i'm living off the pears that grow i was the- i mean i wouldn't say i was only but i was like eating a lot of nectarines and peaches there yeah in the summer nectarines like, are good as fuck but still you're like hey i'm saving a couple bucks the pandemic's rough i'll help you out that fourth step <laughs> so so i i i told them i told them i said look i'll listen but you yeah. know but that's that's what's going to help you so yeah do it or if don't. you're holding a resentment against someone you worked with 10 longer than like fuck 2004 what is that 16 years 17 16 years, years almost 20 years ago boom mm-hmm. there's a guy i work with that i absolutely hate it with all my heart i've had no change i still hate the guy but i don't hold it against him though at this point i've just mm-hmm. accepted that he is what he is am i enlightened <laughs> no because i still don't like the guy so i'm still holding a resentment on him you know but i still I, at least i'm at a point where i can see it and be like oh jerry this is gonna be dead if you focus on this too much it's gonna be really detrimental to your mental health you know these well, even these tiny day to day resentments will fuck you up, dude. You gotta be careful with them, dude. They're the worst. It's there's yeah. a Bukowski poem about the broken shoelace. I don't know. Not what familiar. It, um, you would he, be able to refer it if you hadn't have sold all your books. <laughs> it was it was a rough time in March. Um, I uh, that guy, he 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 garnered me a couple hundred bucks, I think. Um, yeah. but uh. But yeah, it was basically saying that it's not the big things. It's not the, it's not the end of the world. It's the broken shoelace that will make you snap. Right. Was the basic gist of the That's point. why you always hear that in a share when they say the day I relapse is just like any other day. Mm-hmm. It's just a Tuesday. It's not the big things. It's all the little things. And it's not the big things that fuck me up in my day. It's all the little things compounded together. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah, stupid so. things that don't even mean anything that are the ones that send me over the edge you know what i mean and just ruin my day because i let the i allow it mm-hmm. i allow and i hold on to it poison myself instead of just putting it down and experiencing life i think that's part of this whole program this whole thing is like that we've learned that you and i at least you know I, again again we don't apply it all the time but it's no that i'm sort horrible of at it nip it in the bud oh mm-hmm. okay well all right, it got a hold of me. Well, let's just let it go. And let's it's hard as fuck to let go too, especially when you're intentionally trying to let it go. It's hard. Mm-hmm. So my wife would be like, let it go, dude. Let it go. We'll just return it to Amazon, Jerry. I'm like, no, this is the third pair of fucking pants that I've had to return in two weeks because nothing fits. And she's like, let it go, man. Let it go. You know, and I intentionally have to like picture myself dropping it or I'm just going to yeah because i've been ordering because all my shit's in storage i don't know where anything is so like i've been running in like you know like swim trunks practically you know because i have no clothes that wear to fucking run in and work out in so i've been ordering pants from amazon like all the brands i all the Mm -hmm. same shit i ordered before but i've been ordering them like in mediums when they serve me better to be a small because a medium means the phone wings around my pocket and hits me in the balls and then my dad's like, wear a fanny pack and put the phone in that. And I'm like, that's already too much fabric. I don't need a whole fanny pack just to put my phone in. I just need so, a pocket that zips up, that doesn't wing around and hit me in the balls. I'm not wearing one of those weird arm things either. I'm not from the future. So this is all I have. It's one little pouch. Ah. It's got a zipper. It straps ah. on. I don't think about it. I, it works for you, right? But it don't work for me, man. I All just right. need a pocket. I just need a pocket that zips up, right? But anyway, what I'm trying to say is I ordered the pants. There are no zip up pocket. I had to return mm-hmm. shit. It was like fucking tragedy. It was a tragedy. It was so furious. And my wife's like, you need to let this go, dude. You know, what because I had them? done it three times in a row and mm-hmm. it kept getting the third time Amazon fucked up and sent me the wrong item. So right. anyway, what were you going to ask me? What is uh, Amazon's resentment return policy? I don't know. Yo, Bezos, pay your fucking people better, dude. Um, They're not ants, Bezos. You make too mm-hmm. much money. You need to break yourself. Seriously. Yeah, um, mochate. Mochate. Break mochate. it off. 
Mocha tip, bro. Give us all some money. Um, yeah. Just give it to us too. I don't want you to just, I don't want to have to earn it. Just give it to just me. Give it to me. Am I not an American? Anyway. <laughs> but hey, I, well, okay. So, so back to that. Uh -huh. So it's, it's an absolute tragedy and you fucking get frustrated. Furious. And furious. And it furious. It's going to ruin my day. It's got, I'm going to mm -hmm. be pissed off all day because one thing didn't go the way I needed it to go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I got to let go. Got to do like an Elsa. Let it drop go. that resentment. Cause can't never did a thing, Johnny. <clears throat> and you know, so that's, I do the, do the quick in my mind, you know, four through nine okay i mean you got it you got it locked up like that huh? that fast that you're like well, no right. but I, I know what you mean i'm just fucking with you because you may well, even made just, a I, rolodex sound effect where you're like like a rolodex okay. turning yeah well i mean as long as it takes because it's better it's better for me to spend my day working on getting rid of the resentment than just sitting in it like a fucking absolutely dude it's, <laughs> you know what i mean what do we do what do we talk about starting your day at a detriment or a deficit that's just adding a deficit to your day and all you have is that one day mm -hmm. so why put a deficit on it and this is i should i should absolutely download this one podcast and listen to it because i'm well, saying all this <laughs> shit to myself i need to be practicing and i'm well, sitting here telling the world or or all of our five listener to do that shit you know there's like there's like 105 i think I thank think. you all 105 check me on you. my shit if you follow Honestly. me on instagram and you see me being weird check me on my shit so it's like this it's I like this mad, if you, speaking of shit if you had to take a shit jerry yeah you don't you you don't hold it in you no. when you hold it in it starts to hurt and so yeah. would you just but you get up you do the process of going to the bathroom yeah. and evacuating your bowels. You don't shit your pants and then sit so in it all day. This is your metaphor for letting, sh for, for dropping resentments. resentments. Yeah. yeah. I got a squatty potty for Christmas too. So Good for you. It's, things it's have been important. pretty rad, dude. I've been pooping but I mean, like a jungle person. Yeah. But you wouldn't shit your pants and walk around in it all day. No, And then like make everybody else have to deal have with to it. Smell yes, it. Yeah. I see what you're doing here and it's good. Good. you know what i mean you have to yeah. go to the bathroom mm -hmm. and fucking evacuate the resentments you know mm -hmm. remove yourself from the situation mm -hmm. evacuate the resentments yeah put a little lysol on it make sure you clean everything up and then right. you feel better and you're like wow i feel wait, so wait, wait, much wait. better you want me to spray lysol on the turd no <laughs> i don't think that's, that's weird helpful. and gross yeah. there's so many people out there are so bummed out right now they're like listening to us trying to find some insight and we just talk about poo for the last six well, minutes i think that's a great analogy though no but you do have a great point because if you don't go to the bathroom you end up getting a stomach ache in the end if you keep holding it in forever you end up getting infections and harming your body and getting sepsis and you go poop your pants and you go poop your pants and so resentments are just poop in your brain basically yeah, yeah you don't want mr poopy brain and if you're pooping your brain pants it's you're making everybody else smell the anger all day uh, and, and deal with all the reverberating waves of your resentment and anger and then mm -hmm. according to aa and actually some people i've met personally you drink over it you do you actually i i believe you do i believe you poison yourself so hard that you're like well time to get back in the fucking lifeboat the escape hatch back in the saddle again to bring and then boom aerosmith um oh, that is aerosmith isn't it yeah it is it's old aerosmith but um but yeah man because because you just can't take it anymore because because you're a fucking alcoholic and so you just drink. Yeah. I need to have some relief now. Fuck it. Drunk's drunk's gone drink, dude. Yeah. That's what How's we do. That, the um don't ask me why. That's a Billy Joel song. Is that what it's every every drunk must have his drink? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't ask me why. So I think when I when I think of can't never did a thing, it's absolutely true. And it's a block. And it's it's well, I can't. And I was thinking about this, I think last night. I was rolling it over and I was, as I, as I was brushing my teeth before bed, um, which is something that took me a very long time as an adult to get myself to do. Yeah. Is... Um, and still I have resistance sometimes where I'm like, oh, I'm already, it's just go just do put it. in this laffy taffy mouthpiece and let's just yeah. get it done with. Right? I stole that from another podcast, but it made me laugh every time I think of it. But, yeah. um, but I was thinking about the, the level of, resistance that i put in my own head and that like i can't do it and so is it that you can't do it or is it that you don't know how 
It's, it's seemingly too hard. It's seemingly too tedious. You are making up excuses that you don't have enough time, but you don't have a fucking job. <laughs> is that me or is that you? That's me. That was my alarm set for what we were going to do the podcast oh, at three. Before. Okay. So do you know what I mean? So all yeah. these things. And then when I start to think about it, it's like, oh, it's not that I can't. It's that I won't. And I'm just putting all these fucking roadblocks up for myself. So to make it easier and harder for yourself. Yeah. To Isn't make it, it weird? easier to say to no. It, yeah. To make it easier to say no, but to make it harder to do the thing you're supposed mm -hmm. to do. Yeah. So weird. I think that that applies again going back to all the shit that's happening in the world and why mm -hmm. it's important to, and you know, your mother's, you know, a comment about teaching it to people, not, you know, with an alcoholic, you know, an alcohol problem, just learn how to practice, cope with life. Yeah. yeah. Practice these principles in all our affairs. And I go, Oh, Oh, okay. That's what that means. And <clears throat> I don't, I'm not, I'm not in this situation anymore. But it's something that I think a lot of people, if not every single person listening can probably relate to is the, the issues of being in traffic and getting angry in traffic. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's a good and relatively um, easy and harmless. And um, it's just an easy way to apply these steps of yeah. dealing with resentments because a oh, fucking guy, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, well, wait a second. Do you know what I mean? Like it's a, it's a very low risk way of applying the steps and getting used to them and putting yeah. them into practice so that when something big comes up, you can actually deal with right. it when it's important. Cause well, and you got to realize you're not in traffic. You are traffic, baby. Jerry, in it. That's you are fucking, traffic. <laughs> that's there. It is. I think that's, um, I think I stole that from a movie though. This is not a genius pearl from Jerry's about that. I, I know I've taken that from somewhere. You, you, you got that from like, like, you ain't in traffic. You are traffic baby. And I probably got it from like Chris Tucker and rush hour too. Exactly. Yeah. That is no genius pearl on my end there. I wish it were still smash still, that like button. <laughs> still. I think that, um, that that is uh, that's that's a great way to put it and it's important yeah. to know that i am traffic so i need to get out of my own way jerry yeah <clears throat> um Absolutely. i do want to um do a plug for another please podcast do. yeah we don't do we ads go. at the beginning anymore so we yeah, don't do ads do. i used to do ads green camel um, press dot, dot com dot com so we were on this podcast once before and we were back on right now. And yeah. um, I think by the time you hear this, they will have um, moved on to another one, but you can find it in their feed. But VHS, VHUS, mm -hmm. uh, Dirk Marshall, uh, his he grew up in a video store. He loves mm -hmm. horror movies, sci-fi movies, all that kind of shit. And so he had us come on and we watched a movie called Phil the Alien, which I don't know if you can find if you want to watch it you can uh it was very entertaining it might be on youtube as a free link i think that's how right. we watched it was on youtube I, we watched it on youtube but i don't know if it's available to the public or not no but, um i don't know but it was this low budget uh sci-fi i thought it was gonna be awful and it I turned out too. to be actually really funny i was like this movie's gonna suck dude mm -hmm. and then i i started watching it and was like this is really kind of well written like this is funny mm -hmm. ass movie. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was good. And basically an alien comes to earth and has to deal with, and I guess he gets drunk and then becomes, right. becomes, becomes like an alcoholic, I guess, but mm -hmm. it all takes place over the course of like two weeks. So, right. But everything's amplified because it's a comedy. I mean, we're right. not looking at real representation of the alcoholic experience or anything necessary. It's all mostly played off for laughs, but, but there was some stuff in there. And so, so we're on it, uh, VHS, yeah, we're Bill on the it. Alien, if you want to mm -hmm. listen to us blather some more, if you haven't gotten enough already, right. um, and you want to hear it in a different context. <clears throat> but yeah, man, I mean, you are the traffic. I yeah. am the traffic. I am the oh. Eggman. <laughs> Cuckoo-choo. Cuckoo-choo, buddy. Um, right on. All Bye, right. Harry. I'll talk to you next week. Yes, yeah, stay out of traffic. Thanks again for listening. Our music, as always, is by Neglect. You can find more of his stuff at neglect.bandcamp.com. And you can find us on all social media platforms that matter, 
Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. And you can reach us at aisforalcoholic at gmail.com. Talk to you later. Yeah. <laughs>